In the world among normals and espers, a gray-haired man named Hiyobu Kiyosuke stares at the city from a skyscraper and jumps off the edge with a smile. But he doesn't fall to his death. He obliterates the military single-handedly using his ESP powers. He teleports and defeats the soldiers with ease and even crushes a helicopter by only snapping his fingers. Crushing the army is child's play to Kiyosuke, but surprisingly, he surrenders himself to one of the injured soldiers at the end. At a remote Esper prison island called Deadlock, a prisoner named Andy Hinomiya is sparring with his inmates. Although he lacks in physical appearance, he wins every match with his fighting techniques. A helicopter suddenly descends on the island, so everyone gathers around. The latest prisoner on this island, Hiobu Kiyosuke, comes out of the helicopter and gets welcomed by the warden, Ken. Kiyosuke expresses his disinterest and mocks the normals for their inability to use ESP. So he gets punched for his insolence. Hinomiya comes forward to cool both sides off, but the soldiers point their guns at him too. Kiyosuke gains interest in Hinomiya and introduces himself to him. He then showcases his powers, so the soldiers forcefully take him to solitary confinement alongside Hinomiya. Later, Kiyosuke asks Hinomiya why he helped him earlier. Hinomiya explains that he couldn't bear to watch a defenseless kid being attacked. He goes on to say that this place is a grave place for espers since no one has ever managed to escape. But only in serious conditions are the prisoners allowed to move to the nearby hospital. Hinomiya wonders that if he ever managed to escape one day, he would definitely consider joining Kiyosuke's criminal organization, Pandra. At lunch, Hiobu notices the cook poisoning his food, so he gives it to Hinomiya instead. After lunch, Hinomiya falls to the ground in pain while sparring with his inmates. When he opens his eyes again, he finds himself in a confined hospital room alongside Kiyosuke. Kiyosuke gives him the antidote and begins their mission to escape the deadlock island. Hinomiya defeats an armed guard with ease and reveals that he was in the US military once. The pair enters an Esper experiment lab, and Kiyosuke begins to destroy everything in there. A little girl named Yugiri comes out of the sealed glass cage and recognizes Kiyosuke. Kiyosuke prepares to break her out of the cage, but the warden, Ken, interrupts him. The warden realizes that Kiyosuke deliberately surrendered himself so that he could free Yugiri, because she is one of his team's members. Ken promises to turn both Hinomiya and Kiyosuke into his puppets and brings out his ultimate creation, an Esper Frankenstein. Ken reveals that he had taken multiple high-level Esper's prisoners' limbs to make his ultimate creation, and that there is no way even Kiyosuke can defeat it. Kiyosuke finds it difficult to defeat the monster, however, upon noticing how hurt Yugiri is, he flips his power limiter off and releases unlimited ESP. Then, Kiyosuke's being Kiyosuke absolutely obliterates the monster's existence. He then proceeds to kill the warden and destroy the laboratory in seconds. The group finds their ride, Pandra's ship called Catastrophe, well hidden at the dock. Hinomiya doesn't go back on his word and joins Kiyosuke's criminal organization. Finally, a little plot twist reveals that Hinomiya isn't just the powerless esper, but a spy who infiltrated Pandra according to a plan by the US government. It has already been a week since Hinomiya infiltrated into Pandra. Hinomiya becomes awfully distracted by one of Pandra's members, Momiji. Hiobu Kiyosuke teleports there and kicks Hinoma into the pool, first staring at a noblewoman like that, and even makes fun of him calling him a criminal. Hinomiya doesn't acknowledge it, so Kiyosuke calls Hinomiya out for having no self-awareness, as he is now a criminal like them. That's when Hinomiya remembers how he was originally introduced to the team. Kiyosuke introduced him to everyone and told his teammates that Hinomiya has the power to negate any ESP in existence. The little girl Yugiri has the ability to use telepathy, so she tried to read Hinomiya's mind, but she also failed. Her head started to hurt as a side effect, so Kiyosuke explained that because Hinomiya's power affects other people's bodies, any esper would experience dizziness and headaches, but he encouraged them to get along with Hinomiya, as he was now one of them. Back to the latest event, drenched Hinomiya borrows a suit from Maggie because he has no other clothes. He tries his best to get some information out of Magi, but Magi is cautious of him, so he ignores him for the most part. Hinomiya notices an awful lot of little kids on the ship, so he wonders why they are there. 
Maggie explains that in most cases, Esper children get abandoned by their families, so Pandra takes them in. Magi heads on to the center of the ship, but doesn't let Hinomiya come any further. Hinomiya reports his U.S. supervisor that he doesn't sense much tension coming from Pandra. His superior explains that he is the ignorant one if he underestimates Pandra, and reminds him of his mission again. On the other side, Magi expresses his distrust towards Hinomiya, but Kiyosuke tells him not to jump on conclusions and decides to test him in action. The next day, Kiyosuke brings Hinomiya on his next mission in Venice. Hinomiya notices smuggled weapons and stolen paintings and realizes that Pandra really is a criminal organization. Noticing that Hinomiya is startled, Kiyosuke explains that they are about to trade their stuff to the Italian mafia, which makes Hinomiya even more distressed. Magi notices something and uses his synthesizing ability to control every carbon in his body and defeat any opposing threats nearby. Later in the evening, the team has to go at it again, and Kiyosuke orders Hinomiya to join them too. A voice in his head gives him directions, and once he reaches the area, he notices that it is totally muted because of a specific frequency used by one of his teammates, Fujiura. Then he realizes Fujiura can manipulate sounds, and he is doing so so that no one in the city notices the battle going on. Kiyosuke finds out that the mafia boss is double-crossing them, but still decides to meet with him because the boss is an old friend of his. Kiyosuke orders Hinomiya to shoot the mafia boss if he betrays, and explains that death to the traitors is the Esper law. Later that night, Hinomiya points his sniper at the mafia boss's head, and hesitantly waits for Kiyosuke's signal. He realizes that if he doesn't shoot, he will be killed instead. As planned, Kiyosuke meets with the mafia boss. The mafia boss reveals that he knows Kiyosuke from more than 50 years ago, and yet he hasn't changed a single bit. Hinomiya already knows that Hiyobu Kiyosuke manages to keep his youthful appearance by using ESP to manipulate telemesses. He was born in 1930 and joined the Japanese Imperial Army during World War II. Magi whispers to Kiyosuke, confirming that the mafia boss has truly betrayed them and made a deal with the law to protect themselves. So Kiyosuke signals to shoot. But Hinomiya hesitates and doesn't gain enough courage to pull the trigger. Kiyosuke teleports behind Hinomiya and gives him a limiter because he has acted according to plan. In Kiyosuke's mind, Hinomiya had no battle experience whatsoever. So if he had shot the mafia, that would mean that he was truly a spy. That's why he decides to trust him. They teleport back to the boss and reveal that he was a fake. The real boss is far away in the building, hiding and used ESP to fake the meeting. Kiyosuke reveals that he has died once and decides to go rough on his old friend. He releases his unlimited power and destroys the entire city alongside the mafia boss in the blink of an eye. Later at the catastrophe ship, Magi informs Yugiri about the limiter on Hinomiya and asks her to read his mind again to investigate if he's a spy or not. But she doesn't listen to him because she only takes orders from Kiyosuke. Well, that's going to be their biggest mistake. Kids should listen to their elders. Anyways, the team celebrates after their short victory at Venice, and Kiyosuke finally recognizes Hinomiya as one of his comrades. In the small European kingdom of Monarch, on the anniversary of the nation's birth, the Blue Star Day ceremony is about to begin. The princess of Monarch, Sophie, has attempted to uphold a peaceful coexistence with the espers and has invited each and every country's esper organization to this ceremony. Two of Japan's representatives, Minamoto and Sakaki, arrive there and notice that even though this event is a friendly union for the espers, everyone's probing each other like this is a game of espionage. Sakaki realizes how cruel the world is because normals despise the espers, but the espers are also the government's trump card at the same time. Minamoto suddenly becomes shocked after noticing that Hiobu Kiyosuke is also present. He rushes toward Kiyosuke to see what he is about to cook. Kiyosuke discloses that Minamoto and Sakaki are from Babel, Japan's infamous esper organization. Anyway, Sakaki demands to know what criminals like them are doing there. Kiyosuke explains that he just wants to see the faces of the hypocrites, who will be his potential future enemies. The lights suddenly go out before Kiyosuke leaves and kidnaps Princess Sophie. Minamoto and Sakaki offer their help to the police, and Sakaki shows them a pen drive 
that he procured while arguing with Kiyosuke earlier. However, that's all part of Kiyosuke's plan, and he is keeping a close eye on them. Princess Sophie regains consciousness and realizes that she is kidnapped, but Magi assures her that they mean no harm. Kiyosuke tells Sophie that he kidnapped her at Yugiri's request. Sophie doesn't become intimidated. Rather, she cunningly encourages Pandra to join her country. But Kiyosuke ignores her words, knowing that they will ultimately be used by the government. Sakaki learns from the pen drive that Kiyosuke abducted Sophie to prevent an assassination attempt on her. But to decode all the evidence for his claim, Sakaki must beat a game created by Kiyosuke. Inomiya asks Kiyosuke if Yugiri has any history with Sophie and wonders why she intended to kidnap her. Kiyosuke explains that Yugiri predicted Sophie's assassination, which is why she wanted to help her. Since it's her first wish, Kiyosuke decided to grant it with his whole heart. Princess comes with Yugiri, saying that they should let Yugiri play outside, and she offers to show her around the city. It's like she doesn't even know what kidnapping even means. Mastermind Kiyosuke grants this absurd request of Yugiri, as well because he has thought of an interesting plan. He transforms everyone's appearance in the city into Sophie's appearance, but nobody panics as they start to love how they look like royalty. Meanwhile, Magi and his team lure the assassins to the outskirts of the city, where Kiyosuke awaits them. After knocking each one out, Kiyosuke extracts their memories and realizes that the perpetrator must be an insider. Sakaki and Minamoto finally clear the game, and when they are about to analyze the evidence, the chief policemen stop them, saying this is their country's classified information. However, seeing the country's classified information even for less than a second, Minamoto deduces who the perpetrator is. Meanwhile, Princess Sophie, Inomiya, and Yugiri visit an orphanage, and Sophie reveals that Yugiri once stayed there. A flashback shows Yugiri was lonely, even among children. But when Sophie showed interest in her and tried to talk to her, Yugiri couldn't trust her enough back then and rejected talking to her. But now she has another chance to rejoice. Sophie again offers her hand to Yugiri and hugs her. But they are interrupted by the perpetrator. He shoots at Sophie, but Hinomiya manages to push her off and takes the hit. The perpetrator reveals that Sophie used the country's budget to establish a fund for Esper's protection and her stupidity must be punishable by death. Yugiri tries to help, but she doesn't seem to be able to control her powers yet. Kiyosuke shows up and claims Yugiri. Then he easily squashes the gun, so the police capture the perpetrator. Sophie realizes that Kiyosuke is better suited to be beside Yugiri than her. He hands the princess back to Minamoto and teleports away with Hinomiya and Yugiri. Team Pandra is planning to return to Japan on another mission. Momiji asks Kiyosuke why he's so desperate to return. He hints that he misses his queen and that the screen pans to a mysterious red-headed girl. Hinomiya's supervisor asks him about his progress in secret. To his disappointment, Hinomiya hasn't been able to enter the central part of the ship and the crew doesn't trust him enough. Thus, he has no information to give. His supervisor reminds him of his mission again, which is to secure a certain device from Pandra, and warns him that failure will not be tolerated. Hinomiya realizes that it's time to get serious, and this time he has a plan. Hinomiya tries to sneak into the central part, but he is spotted by Fujira and Yugiri, and they give him a warning not to go there again. Meanwhile, Japan's Babel organization manages to locate the catastrophe as it enters their region. Minamoto orders his three female Esper subordinates to attack before the battle begins. Babel's plan is to arrest everyone on the ship, and the three Esper girls act accordingly and start to sabotage the entire ship. Hinomiya notices the red alert, and innocent Yugiri gives him Momotaro as protection since she thinks he is weak. Kiyosuke suddenly notices the redhead outside and teleports there. He calls the redhead named Kaoro his queen, and tells her how she has grown more beautiful over the years. They begin their battle by using their ESP to throw electrical waves and even flamethrowers out of thin air. Meanwhile, Hinomiya and the group are dealing with the two others in Babel. Hinomiya almost captures Aoi, but her teammate Shiho plays the Uno reverse card, and he gets captured by her. Shiho tries to use her psychometry on Hinomiya to test his intentions, but fails because he has anti-ESP powers. 
Inomiya suddenly realizes that Kaori, Aoi, and Shiho are the special espers of Babel, called the Children. To learn more about them, go watch the original Psychic Squad. Anyway, Shiho finds the access security key on the boat's main part, so Hinomiya also tries to sneak his way in, and makes an excuse that he would be a good hostage. So, they use him to gain control over the ship and change the voyage so that Kiyosuke can't run away again. Kiyosuke teleports back to the ship to fix the situation, and finds Hinomiya sneaking his way into the center area again. Hinomiya fails again and gets back to the crew. Pandra realizes that they are surrounded by the enemy force, and Kiyosuke decides to face them all alone. Hinomiya joins Kiyosuke, but he may have an ulterior motive. Kiyosuke infiltrates Babel's ship to retain his comrades, but he is interrupted by the children, Kaoru, Aoi, and Shiho. Kiyosuke orders Hinomiya to get the remote back from Babel's director, Tsubomi Fujiko. Well, Hinomiya tries but gets thrashed by Fujiko's high-level composite power. But in a sudden turn of events, a missile hits the ship and Hinomiya takes the chance to grab a hold of Fujiko. Hinomiya's left eye has a secret power that can nullify anyone's aura, especially if they are in touch. So Hinomiya knocks her out and stares at her like a perv. He then breaks the remote, which helps Magi regain control. Minamoto comes from behind, but the villain hero Kiyosuke rescues Hinomiya from being shot and saves the day. Magi finally trusts Hinomiya enough to give him the access key. Side characters make the biggest blunders of all time, don't they? In any case, the day isn't saved because the children have a trump card up their sleeves, and it's their ultimate attack. Oh well, it's no match for Kiyosuke's limitless power, so their attack fails, and Kiyosuke saves the day again. After escaping the slight disaster against Babel, the catastrophe ship must be repaired. The ship has its own special mechanic, named Muscle. Kiyosuke hands the ship over to Muscle and leaves quickly to take care of what he calls some minor business. While Babel believes they have warded off Pandra from their country, Pandra are actually taking the chance to explore Japan's beauty. Momiji keeps suggesting things to Yugiri that she can buy, but Yugiri says that she can choose on her own and runs off. So the useless babysitter of the criminal organization, Inomiya, has to take care of the situation. He follows Yugiri to a charm shop where she buys a charm. Then, uselessness, Hinomiya loses his way. So they must go to a theme park to satisfy the kid. Meanwhile, Kiyosuke infiltrates an ECM facility to do his minor business. Meanwhile, the babysitter and the kid are enjoying the amusement. Oh no, they are being stalked by none other than Babel once again. Hinomiya notices them and lures them to a quiet place while Yugiri is enjoying a show. Minamoto reveals that he knows Hinomiya is a US investigator. Hinomiya doesn't admit it, because even walls have ears. Fujiko shows up and lets him know of their intentions. They plan to use Hinomiya's help to arrest Pandra all at once. Hinomiya demands to know why Babel is so obsessed with Kiyosuke. Fujiko explains that Kiyosuke was a member of an Esper team from Japan in World War II, but he was betrayed by one of his superiors, so he took revenge and started to kill everyone, including some of Babel's initial members, because he believed that no ESP protection that is associated with normals can be trusted. Fujiko also reveals that she is the source of this information, as she is even older than Kiyosuke. In the meantime, Yugiri sees a lost kid and decides to become a humanitarian herself. She uses her telepathic ability to find the kid's parents, but they get terrified of her after learning that she's an esper. Words spread quickly, and the security forces come to neutralize Yugiri, because all normals treat espers as monsters. One of the policemen grabs Yugiri to escort her out, and she freaks out, but she is unable to control her ESP ability. She transforms entire realities into something absurd. But it's just an illusion playing on people's minds. Hinomiya learns about the situation and rushes there to help her. He grabs a hold of her and uses his powers to nullify her ESP. Hinomiya calms her down, claiming she did nothing wrong. Magi and the gang teleport there to see what the fuss is about, and find the babysitter in an awful position with the child. They initially think of something horrible and call him a lecherous man. But Magi understands most of the situation by looking at the people's faces and teleports away with them. Later at the ship, Hinomiya asks why Pandra uses the word family so much. 
Momiji explains that when she was just a little kid, her hometown was in the middle of a civil war. The army decided to eliminate her, assuming she's an esper. But Kiyosuke came at the right moment and rescued her. Also, the kids with him were Magi and Fujira, an old man obsessed with little children that doesn't sound too good. Anyway, Momiji joined Kiyosuke because he promised to bring her and every esper's peace. So, that's why every member of Kiyosuke's team is thankful to him. Well, it's Kiyosuke's birthday today, and everyone has planned a surprise party for him. Everyone gives him presents, serially. Yugiri gives him a charm that she had bought today. But dumb babysitter Hinomiya doesn't know about his birthday, so he didn't bring any gifts. But he promises to give one next year. That's when Kiyosuke wonders if he will even be alive because he learned from his minor business that he doesn't have much time left to live. Hinomiya is neither normal nor abnormal, but rather an incomplete individual. When he was in the US Army, he was bullied by espers and also by the normals. He didn't fit anywhere. But after serving in the military, his latest superior, Alan Walsh, recruited him as an ESP investigator. Back to the present, Alan tells Hinomiya about their alliance with Japan, so they can use Babel's assistance to get the device more efficiently. He tells Hinomiya to contact him immediately once he has a full plan to obtain the device. Then, they can help each other gain everything they want, while the middleman, Hinomiya, gets nothing out of it. Magi tells the crew about their next mission to steal a new ECM technology that can possibly be used against them. Kiyosuke notices Hinomiya is distracted and asks if leaving Japan would be a problem for him. Hinomiya acts suspicious as usual, so Kiyosuke finally becomes wary of him. Kiyosuke goes in front of an empty throne and takes an oath to protect their ship until the queen is seated there. The babysitter reads a bedtime story to Yugiri and then goes to the library to return the book. He hears someone coming into the library and decides to eavesdrop on them. It's none other than Kiyosuke, and he opens a book to summon a man called Utsumi, who is just a virtualization of thoughts in that book. Kiyosuke shows him a blueprint of something, and Utsumi immediately understands that it's a device that has the mind of Ichihago, who died in World War II. Ichihago had telepathic abilities. And with that, he was able to perform calculations impossible for human beings. So, the boat is using Ichihago's brain to perform various functions, like aerial flight and spatial cloaking. After Utsumi understands the mechanism of the boat's core, Kiyosuke requests that he take over if something bad happens to him. Utsumi senses that someone is eavesdropping on them, but Kiyosuke tells him not to worry and realizes it's Hinomiya after finding his limiter on the ground. The next day, Kiyosuke simply gives Hinomiya the limiter back and doesn't say anything. Hinomiya confronts Kiyosuke, asking if he will kill all the normals to achieve his ultimate goal. Kiyosuke asks which side he will take if he takes such measures. Hinomiya gets caught off guard and reflects on how he is neither a normal nor an esper. To become complete, he must choose a side. Kiyosuke doesn't get an answer and warns Hinomiya not to mess up their next mission. Hinomiya eventually decides to choose the US's side because they let him be himself. He informs Alan that he plans to obtain Ichihago by using Babel as a distraction and requests Alan to simply apply some pressure from the US side so Babel doesn't interfere with Hinomiya's plan. Hinomiya leaked Catastrophe's location to Babel. Babel here wants to protect Pandra's innocence by stopping Kiyosuke. And this is their perfect chance. The next day, Babel tries to stop Pandra, but Kiyosuke leaves immediately to protect the ship. His queen, Kaori, stops him on the way saying the ship will sink according to Babel's prediction. But Kiyosuke can't simply abandon the ship because his comrades are there. He defeats Kaori by using Unlimited, but his heart starts aching right after. Meanwhile, Hinomiya rushes to the ship to get the device, but stumbles upon Yugiri, guarding the door of the Ichiago room. He makes up an excuse and tells her to wait in her room. He then enters the room and informs his superior. But before he can take Ichiago out, Kiyosuke appears from behind. He reveals that he knew from the beginning that Hinomiya was a spy, but wanted to let him choose which path he wanted to take. As the episode concludes, Kiyosuke announces that Hinomiya will die here. Long ago, when Hiobu Kiyosuke was only 7 years old, there was a war in Japan. Kiyosuke's father's an old friend, Baron Sobomi, adopted him and brought him to Japan. 
After landing in Japan, Kiyosuke meets with the Baron's daughter, Fujiko, another esper like him who is to be his stepsister. Kiyosuke writes letters to his late father after settling in with his new family. The letter reveals how his father and Baron were ESP researchers. But eventually his father abandoned their research and even abused Kiyosuke for being an esper. Fujiko sees him writing the letter and snatches it jokingly. Kiyosuke seems butthurt and takes it back using ESP. This surprises Fujiko when she learns that his powers are greater than hers. Suddenly, the Imperial Army Captain, Saotome Eiji, enters the room alongside Utsumi and Baron. Saotome's main goal is to weaponize ESP, and he invites Kiyosuke and Fujiko to join the Imperial Army's special ESP unit. Both kids initially refuse, but after considering how they could use ESP to help people and prove that they are not monsters, they eventually agree to join the Imperial Army's ESP unit. After a year, the military makes a film about the Imperial Army Special Operations Unit to make it public. Originally, the video acknowledged their usefulness, but it turned out into a comedy as it progressed. Kiyosuke repairs the only memento left by his father, a watch, and on his way back, a police officer stops him for wearing a showy outfit. He tries to discipline him for slacking off, but he doesn't know he's already in the army. Fujiko comes forward to defend Kiyosuke and humiliates the policeman in front of everyone. The situation gets out of hand, and Utsumi escorts both of them out of there. Fujiko unfortunately hit a naval officer, so the entire ESP unit is under house arrest as a punishment. Fujiko's ego doesn't let her apologize for causing this blunder. But Utsumi confronts her by saying every esper joined this unit to get recognized by the people, so they have technically achieved it. Saotome must apologize to his superiors for the mistake caused by his subordinates. He promises them that without them, Japan will never be able to counter the upcoming threats. So, he requests that they have faith in the espers, the unit eavesdrop on their conversation, and decides to cause some harm if they get fired. Saotome explains to the higher-ups that the army has successfully invented fighter planes, and he will start intense training on the espers group and tell them to hold their breath, because something's about to be cooked. That's right. Saotome challenges the Navy unit on a head-to-head -head battle against the ESP unit, and if they lose, they will get disbanded. Saotome explains to the unit that they must face the Navy head-on to survive as an army unit. He further explains that the battle will be a one-on-one -on -one aerial fight, and they will only use fake bullets in the machine guns. Fujiko steps up to be the fighter, as she wants to take responsibility for originally causing all this trouble. But Saotome surprisingly assigns Hiobu Kiyosuke for this mission. Kiyosuke trains with one of his teammates to learn how to use machine guns, but fails several times. Later, Fujiko joins Kiyosuke in his bath and apologizes for not protecting her little brother. She promises to become stronger so that she can protect Kiyosuke in the future. She comes forward and hugs him, giving him motivation to win the duel. Everyone's counting on Kiyosuke because their future is riding on this duel. The naval fighter approaches as Kiyosuke stands in the middle of nowhere. Right before the naval fighter shoots, Kiyosuke starts jiggling so that his movements become unpredictable. A flashback in this flashback shows Kiyosuke telling his comrade that he intends to use a rifle instead of a machine gun, as it's lighter, even though it only has five rounds. So, to seal his success, Kiyosuke intends to headshot the enemy. According to the plan, Kiyosuke moves around faster with his irregular movements, but his body stops moving suddenly, as if something is pulling him down. Saotome explains to everyone that the situation is going according to his calculations, and Kiyosuke is filled with triumph. Kiyosuke suddenly remembers how his father abused him for using his powers. His mother was researched by his father and she eventually died. That's why Kiyosuke's father didn't want to make the same mistake again and told Kiyosuke to abandon ESP to remain human. Kiyosuke suddenly remembers Saotome's words to him, which go like brainwashing this and that. Well, he told Kiyosuke to forget his father and to be himself because his power is a gift. So, Kiyosuke releases his full potential and dodges every shot proficiently. In the end, he manages to defeat the plane using only one shot. Right after, Saotome informs the crew that a U.S. submarine has merged out of the water nearby and that it's an emergency. 
It's time for a real battle. Kiyosuke notices some dolphins who can use telepathy. It seems that they escaped from the US, which is why the submarine is after them. The submarine shoots one of the dolphins and Kiyosuke can't help but try to save them. He successfully stops a missile and rescues the other two dolphins. Delighted, Kiyosuke comes flying to the captain and hugs him. Fujiko realizes that she also needs to move forward, just like Kiyosuke. Several years pass, and Kiyosuke comes to report that Hiroshima has been bombed. Sao Tome explains that the war is over since everyone except Kiyosuke is badly injured. Still, Kiyosuke wants to stop the second bomb all by himself. Sao Tome has heard enough. He holds the dead dolphin Ichago's brain. Which can even predict the future. Sao Tome reveals that Ichago has determined that the number of espers will keep increasing following the war and Kiyosuke will lead them and destroy the world. So he points his gun at Kiyosuke's head and shoots him to stop him from being humanity's enemy. Kiyosuke doesn't accept this fate and rises from being almost dead. He takes an oath to kill every last one of the normals who betrayed him. Coming back to the present, the US government sends a whole navy fleet to completely destroy Kiyosuke. Inomiya is forced to take desperate measures and decides to shoot Kiyosuke, as if that's going to work. But he doesn't shoot because his mission is to secure Ichiago to ensure its recovery. So he swiftly throws his gun and he catches Kiyosuke off guard. Inomiya uses this perfect opportunity to grab Ichiago and nullify its abilities. The catastrophe reappears again so the army approaches it with its full force. A mysterious man tells all the passengers on catastrophe to turn themselves into the police and says that allowing them to act as they pleased up until now was their mistake. The mysterious voice adds that they cannot allow monsters to run and flee and threaten humanity. That's when Kiyosuke recognizes the voice and rages with full-on anger. The fleet directly attacks the ship, but Kiyosuke wants to confirm his suspicions about the mysterious voice and demands to know his identity. The army infiltrates the ship and uses ECM, which has the ability to nullify the espers. Babel learns all the situation too, and Minamoto decides to help him. But Fujiko tells him not to interfere because of political reasons. Inomiya tries contacting Alan because he didn't agree on any terms to directly attack the espers. Yugiri hides behind a stairway but gets captured by Alan himself. Alan calls her a monster before restraining her. Momotaro comes to protect Inomiya but gets shocked when he sees what a traitor he is. Inomiya sees Yugiri being restrained and being called a monster so he picks up a gun to defend them, calling them humans too. Alan claims that he has become infected by the monsters, so he shoots him right in the heart and takes Yugiri away. Meanwhile, Kiyosuke desperately tries to fend them off and questions himself if it's really that man. He then faces reality and notices that the ship is almost destroyed, his heart starts to ache again, and he loses his grip. Kiyosuke almost loses his sanity, but pulls it together after realizing that he should be the one protecting everyone. He steps up again and releases Unlimited. He tries desperately to protect his ship and comrades and begins destroying Navy fleets. Inomiya is alive because the gunshot struck him on his limiter. Kiyosuke is almost worn out, but he still keeps fighting. In the end, he gives up and accepts his fate. The ship gets destroyed and the throne of Kiyosuke's queen drowns in the sea. Can Hinomiya save Kiyosuke just in time? Kiyosuke remembers his father's words again. His father told him not to use his powers again because he'd end up being used again. But he put his faith in Satom. His father tells him to sleep forever as his punishment for tossing him aside. Well, the unlikely hero Hinomiya saves Kiyosuke from drowning and realizes he has no way out. Another savior, Fujiko, appears out of nowhere and hopefully saves them. Fujiko brings both Kiyosuke and Hinomiya to Baron Tsubomi's former villa to give them medical treatment. Kiyosuke wakes up eventually and the situation becomes awkward between the step-siblings. Fujiko asks why the US went to such extreme measures to take down Pandra. Kiyosuke takes a moment to gather his thoughts and tells her that he has nothing to tell her because she isn't his big sister anymore. Meanwhile, Hinomiya gets his GPS biochip removed from his forehead so that the US cannot track his location again. The children learn that Kiyosuke is alive and decide to go there. Inomiya tells them he regrets it and wants to repent. So, Kaoru takes him along with them to where Kiyosuke is right now. 
On their way, Kaoru explains that Kyosuke's ideology is wrong since there are normals like Minamoto who don't treat espers like monsters. She doesn't want to become the queen of espers and just wants everyone to get along. Magi and the gang find out that Yugiri is being held by the US but cannot determine where she is. Momiji hopes she is okay. Momotaro tells them that Hinomiya has betrayed them. Everyone is let down by this act. Hinomiya finally reaches Kiyosuke's place. The audacity of this man after all that Kiyosuke asks about that mysterious man that he heard earlier. Hinomiya goes on in detail and says that when USEI scouted him, a mysterious old man told Hinomiya that they want Esper's abilities to help the world and told him that Hinomiya's power is a gift from God. Hinomiya then gives the man's description. He is Japanese and his scars are from World War II. This confirms Kiyosuke's suspicions as he realizes that Saotome is still alive. Sakaki finds out that Kiyosuke will be dying soon, but there is a way to minimize his disease's effects. Kaoru shares her blood and promises to Kiyosuke that she will save everyone from Pandra. At midnight, Kiyosuke sneaks out of the villa, but he shouldn't be able to get this far in his condition. Kaoru stops Kiyosuke, and the eavesdropping traitor babysitter listens in. Kiyosuke must take revenge on Saotome, otherwise he will cease to be himself. Kaoru understands how he feels, but she doesn't want him to go in this condition. Kaoru offers to work together to get a better future. But Kiyosuke wants to walk alone down the path of revenge, rejecting a better future. Well, Hinomiya joins in for mental support, I guess. Saotome learns from Ichiago that Kaoru will definitely be the queen of catastrophe one day. So she must be eliminated as well. Hinomiya offers Kiyosuke a ride and tells him that he owes the Usei some payback too. Kiyosuke holds his grudge, gives Hinomiya his limiter back, and gets in the jeep on their journey for revenge. The Usei is in a lot of peace after dealing with such a huge threat with ease. Hinomiya's former supervisor, Alan, returns home and finds two uninvited guests inside. To him, they are two ghosts who have both returned from the grave. An undead old man, Hiyobu Kiyosuke, and a heartless babysitter, Andy Hinomiya. While Hinomiya is holding a gun behind Alan's head, Alan tries desperately to play mind games and surprisingly catches him off guard. He snatches the gun and shoots Kiyosuke. But, who am I kidding? It's Hiyobu Kiyosuke. Of course he has stopped the bullet. Before killing Alan, Kiyosuke demands to know where Yugiri is. Alan understands and leads the way, but it's kind of obvious that he's leading them to a trap. Alan leads them to a sealed facility, and while they head deeper in there, Alan shares his ideology with both of them. He tells him that his goal is to administer the chaotic power called ESP and to tame the beast. They must take forceful measures. He gives an example of Yugiri. Yugiri was originally an experimental product for Usei, but she managed to escape and cause them a lot of harm. Kiyosuke gets pissed off but keeps his cool to get Yugiri. Alan lures them to a sealed room and then the blockheads realize that this was a trap all along. Saotome welcomes them to their cage. Saotome reveals that after Kiyosuke finished him off, he still clung to life. And through arrangements by the US, he survived and got this new life. Saotome gives a hint as to what he plans to do. He shows them pictures of destroyed cities, predicted by Ichiago. And in the middle, the queen of catastrophe, Kaoru, stands. So, Saotome intends to rewrite the future, and in his future, Kaoru must be erased. However, Kiyosuke won't just sit and let that happen, right? Alan notices the drone's arrival and even decides to sacrifice himself so that Kiyosuke dies too. But Alan takes the hit and dies instantly. Kiyosuke's heart starts aching again. So, Hinomiya steps up again and takes on hundreds of drones using his manpower. Call it luck, but they somehow evade every attack and enter the elevator. The duo dodges laser attacks and defeats the drones with ease. More and more show up, but the duo refuses to give up that easily. Kiyosuke's ESP almost runs out. So, Hinomiya decides to sacrifice himself and tells him to run away. Even though it's suicide, they both pick up their weapons again. Suddenly, Kiyosuke's guardian angel, Magi, and the team show up and save them from their deaths. Fujira punches Hinomiya for betraying them, and both promise to rescue Yugiri together. The group sees on TV that the new mayor of New York intends to support Espers. So, Saotome's plan must be to kill the mayor to rewrite the future in Normal's favor. 
The group heads to New York with Godspeed and finds Yugiri brainwashed by the Usei. Everyone tries their best, but everyone who tries to communicate with Yugiri fails. It's just Hinomiya and Kyosuke left. Will they be able to make Yugiri return to normal? Hiobu Kyosuke stands on top of a skyscraper again, just like in the first episode of the series. The only difference is that this time he has a pet hamster. I mean, Momotaro. Kyosuke looks down on the city, and he should have jumped by now, but the old man's heart starts aching again. He takes a charm out of his pocket and remembers that it was given to him by Yugiri on his birthday. Green, the newly elected mayor of New York, will be sworn in shortly after, and the team must somehow prevent his assassination. Saotome learns that Hiobu Kyosuke hasn't shown himself yet, but he knows that he is definitely nearby. Saotome has also learned from Ichiago's precognition that Mayor Green will bring momentary peace between the espers and the normals in the city. But due to his assassination by an esper today, there won't be a chance of that, and the future will be rewritten. Riots will ensue. Distrust and opposition against espers will increase, resulting in countermeasures that will take away their freedom slowly but surely, and the Queen of Catastrophe will be erased from the new rewritten future forever. Hinomiya desperately follows Yugiri around. She accidentally drops her charm on the ground, and Hinomiya picks it up. He tries to follow her again, but the policemen capture him, claiming to have an arrest warrant against him. Minamoto and Sakaki come to his rescue and reveal that another U.S. intelligence agency has sought assistance from Babel. Which is why they are here. Hinomiya hurries in, but he's too late, as Yugiri has already started to do the assassination. Hinomiya reaches the mayor in time and saves his life. The police force tries to kill the mayor before Minamoto and Sakaki stop them. Meanwhile, Saotome enjoys the scenario as a spectator and appreciates Yugiri's high-level ESP. And he even hints that she is related to Kiyosuke. Kiyosuke comes close to Yugiri and immediately realizes that she is using a hypnotic attack. He becomes ready to face himself and fights the hypnosis. Kiyosuke's whole life's difficulties flash before his eyes, and he starts to forget that this is all an illusion. But he eventually pulls himself together and releases his Unlimited. From Japan, Kaori notices Kiyosuke using his Unlimited. Anyway, Kiyosuke manages to break the hypnosis using his Unlimited. Kiyosuke sees the memory of Yugiri being badly experimented on, which caused a laboratory to explode. Then she was taken in by Princess Sophie's orphanage, but she was afraid to communicate, thinking she would cause harm again. That's when she met Kiyosuke, who didn't let her feel like a monster anymore, and gave her a new family to be with. Kiyosuke releases Yugiri's hypnotic seal and unbrainwashes her, but he loses control of his body's element for overusing Unlimited. He accepts that this is his end and tells Hinomiya to run with Yugiri. Hinomiya doesn't like to follow orders and wants to save Kyosuke. Yugiri also stands tall with him. Yugiri promises to protect Kyosuke, and they ultimately reach him. Hinomiya uses his negative ability to drain Kyosuke's unlimited ESP, and he falls unconscious. Then the scene jumps to Kaori, where she realizes looking up at the sky that Kyosuke is safe. Somewhere ahead in time, Kyosuke finds Sao Tom reading a newspaper in the park. Kyosuke tells Sao Tom that he has nowhere else to run because all of his subordinates have surrendered to the law. Sao Tom begs Kyosuke to kill him, but Kyosuke decides to punish him more by killing his soul instead. So he bids farewell to Sao Tom and erases his memories, making him just a regular old man. And Hinomiya is leaving Pandra again to explore the world and walk his own path. Kiyosuke understands his feelings and lets him go as an honorary Pandra member. Now then, how will the new future unfold? Did you enjoy this recap? If you did, kindly like this video and subscribe to our channel so we can bring you the recap of the next chapters of this exciting manga series. Until next time, do take care and stay safe.